monthly visit with Bag Milk. How you doing, my friend? Greetings from the tundra. Tundra prison. (laughs) It's not so bad working from home when it's like this. World's longest hockey game. The pucks are breaking. (laughs) Is that true? Yeah, it's cool. The the goalie there, Andrew, he posted a few pictures and all the pucks keep shattering. It's so cold. (laughs) Man, I feel for those guys. What a week to be trying to do this. You know what? They get cold snaps like this quite often for that world's longest hockey game. This isn't the first time I, I can remember them being out there and like minus stupid, right? Uh, before we get into the Oilers game um, from last night and where we're at, we should touch on this quickly. You've seen the list of the potential um, Edmonton football club names? I have, yes. And? Unfortunately, the Edmonton Evan Bouchards did not make it on the finalist list, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You like any of them? I, I mean, it, <laughs> I, I think it's funny that, first of all, uh, Eagles is on the list because, like, are we just going to take the Philly Eagles? Like, are we going to take their color scheme, too? Or <laughs> and that, I, I don't know. I think of all of them, none really tickle my fancy, but I think it's going to be Elk. It has to be Elk, right? I think so, yeah. I think that's what they go with, yeah. We uh, we we have a name for the fan base already. The alcoholics. Oh yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, actually, that was the reason why. Because I was sitting there struggling with which one to go vote for, and then Grant brought that up in his Grant report yesterday, and I'm like, all right, I you you've got me. I'm <laughs> See, sold. Now you could if if it's the alcoholics, you could fashion some kind of antler beer helmet. As oh, well. so, like the the possibilities are endless. I that. didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, yeah, you get the you beers go. up on the antlers, and can we steal that for our merch page? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. You get the copyright on that one, and you know what? If you do it properly. And the the elk antlers are big enough. You could put four, five, six beers on there. <laughs> That's a good point. So last night's game, um, there was the end of a, a a rather conspicuous streak. I guess is the best way of putting it. Yeah, you know what? That was last night was the Steve Miller band kind of game. You just take the money and run on that one. I think that uh, the Oilers were lucky to win that game. I agree. I think Nico Koskinen was a major part of it, which I was thrilled to see because he did not have a great game against the Flames on Saturday. So to see him bounce back like that, steal two points in Ottawa, uh, maintain the perfect winning record over them with four games and oh, um, so far this season. That's That was important. Those are big points. And they have a game against Montreal that's going to be a lot tougher on Thursday. And it's nice to go into there with some points in the bank as opposed to trying to scrape back um, and get back in the winning streak. And it was the first time that McDavid and Dreisaitl <laughs> together have been held off the score sheet and there's been a win for our Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, first time since late 2017. It's one of those stats that when I saw that come out last night, I just could not believe it. It's just one of those, like, it's first of all, you know, it's clear how many games both of those guys go without a point, which is barely ever. And uh, it, it was just one of those fascinating bits of trivia that no one expected. In, in fact, yeah. I would go even so far as to say last time they won without either of those getting guys getting a point, Eero Pakarinen was still on the team. I don't even know how many people <laughs> even remember him. <laughs> that rings a bell, but I barely remember him. They were trying to. They had both McDavid and Dreisaitl out the last, I think, minute and a half, maybe even longer. And both guys uh, hit posts on the empty yeah. side. It was just like, yeah. it was just not meant to be last night. But like I said, it was one of those ones where – You'd be thankful for the points. I don't know how many positives outside of uh, three goals from defensemen and Miko Koskin you can really take out of that game. But you know what? Take the points. Yeah, take I love points. I love the fact that what will end up happening is, because we've seen it before, both McDavid and Dreisaitl will have a B in their bonnet. And and they'll they'll say all the right things in front of the mics and they'll answer all the questions right. And, you know, it's the two points for the team that matters the most. But you know they're going to be a little bit pissy on Thursday night against the Habs. And I think they're going to they're gonna light up the Habs tomorrow. Sure. I mean, the 10-game winning uh, point streak for both of them got snapped against the Ottawa Senators of all teams. So I don't imagine any team would very much be excited to uh, go up against an angry McDavid or Dreisaitl. And I'm still convinced those two have some kind of secret bet amongst themselves about who wins the Hart or the Art Rose Ross or something. Because sure I don't they know do. If, yeah. I don't know if Absolutely. I've ever seen a pair of teammates this dominant. Like, maybe Sid and Malkin way back in the day, 
Um, but man, these two are on another level right now. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any bets on how long, um, uh, before Patrick line asks for another trade? <laughs> Imagine going from having uh, coaching problems with Paul Maurice to sitting in your first, well, I think it was his fourth game, and he's already benched by Torts. So. I love it. I, I don't know what's going on there. Couldn't happen it's, to a nicer kid. <laughs> it's funny, though, right? Like, yeah. I mean, he went from one coach that he apparently had problems with to one that's even more aggressive in Torts. So I'm fascinated to see how that plays out because the thing is, they've got a finished GM in, in Columbus, too. So I wonder if there's going to be any shenanigans where he maybe goes upstairs above dad's head to the the big boss man or anything at some point. Torts doesn't know. care. He doesn't care. He does not. And even no. his, his post game, when he was asked about it, he just kind of said, he's like, I'm going to do it if I think I should do it. So I don't care what you think. And yeah, he's like, it had the, nothing to do with his play. I love, <laughs> I love him. I think I he's, love Torts too. Yeah. I think he's the best. I think first of all, <laughs> he is some personality in a very, very boring sports league. And yeah. I can't get enough of him. Go vote for the elk. Go alcoholics. Yeah, go alcoholics. <laughs> Thanks, Bag Milk. Talk to you next week. Thank you.